Oh, it's not just Chanel that has problems. I also have problems with my DRPs. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello, my name is Amy and I promised that I would share with you all the items that I had sold recently, I guess in the past year. I was looking at the list and I was a bit nervous talking about it. I realized that I let go of a lot of costume jewelry. Don't get me wrong, I still enjoy my costume jewelry. I still have a very healthy collection, but I'm happy that I downsized because I have had some problems. Last year, I still had two brooches left. I was just keeping them thinking that they are very classic, which they are, of course, but I also noticed that I never wear them, so it kind of didn't serve any purpose in my collection anymore. I don't really gravitate towards them at all. I used to think that I could just leave it on my jacket, which I actually don't recommend because it didn't happen to me, but it happened to one of my good friends where it started tarnishing. I honestly don't know exactly why, but I would think that maybe after you wear a jacket, it gets warm, it gets moisture, and it can trap in the fabric and so it can get onto the costume jewelry piece and if you don't wipe it over a long period of time it will just start tarnishing luckily her piece was in brass and she was still able to get tarnishing off with brasso but I just didn't want any of that to happen to my pieces and also I don't wear my brooches anyway. Some of you are very surprised about me selling some of my earrings but like I said I did keep all of my favorites already and I just let go of the ones that are kind of duplicates or maybe I've just kind of moved on from them. One of the most prominent one is the big Chanel. I just knew that practically speaking they're just costume jewelry that I would wear on occasion so I only really need one pair of those. Crystal ones are so out there that I felt like I had very little occasions to wear them. I really felt that way, so I consigned them. So yes, I basically ended up keeping just one pair, which are these ones. Another Chanel earring that I also sold are actually the studs version. You're gonna catch me say that for everything because I do love them, but very, very dear to me subscriber who was crazy about those earrings and she totally missed out and she was begging me to sell it to her. Not literally, but you know what I mean? Like she was very, very passionate about them. So I sold it to her and she is so happy. The next pair of earrings, which will shock a lot of you, vintage dangling CC earrings, which are completely discontinued. I kind of have a little bit of regret when I first sold them just because I've been attached to all these things for a long time. It really did help that I got these ones in the end because I definitely look better in silver jewelry and I think a lot of you agree as well. I wear all kinds of metals but I really prefer silver. I think they just pop more against my fair skin tone so these ones were kind of their replacement and also I like the fact that these ones have crystals because they're dressy and honestly any time that I go for costume jewelry is when I want a statement earring. I also let go of another pair of CC earrings that were studs, bigger studs than these so I still kept these ones for myself. At the end of the day when I look at these two trays of mine that are filled with costume jewelry they kind of look similar. The last pair of earrings that I let go are the tiny little pearl ones. Those were so popular. They also made a dangling version of those. That one's also a classic. However, that one I did have a problem with them. One of the pearls just fell off one day and it was still in my tray. Basically, it fell off while still in storage wear and tear on its own i guess the glue just didn't work after a while so luckily i still had the little piece of pearl and i just brought it back to chanel so they just fixed it which took a while as well and after that i just didn't want anything else to happen to it like i don't want to be wearing them and then one day more pearls started falling so i just consigned them i don't know what else to say other than just be very diligent with your pieces, you know, try to do your best at storing them and at caring for them. And if something does happen, hopefully you can still bring it to your Chanel store and have them fix it. And don't get me wrong, it's not just Chanel that has problems. I also have problems with my DRPs. So let's move on to some of the necklaces. Puffy CC heart, so just the same as that earring size, but just the pendant version. I end up buying this stunning necklace which is the whole pearl version which I prefer if I'm ever gonna wear the pearls I'm just gonna go for this and the earrings instead of the little pendant which to me the pendant was sort of neither here nor there they were nice but it was still too plain another Chanel necklace that I did let go was a pearl necklace I had one which the pearls were more spaced out 
and they were very pretty it was actually very elegant on but for some reason i just didn't really wear that one um, I also hardly wear this one to be honest. They're so classic. It's, it's such a specific elegant look that I only wear it on special very very special occasions. I find that when they're spaced out they're definitely a little bit more trendy and you know if I'm gonna go for pearls I want the most classic look and therefore I just let those ones go because they were basically similar. The LV necklace with the letter A initial. You guys probably hear me say that all the time. I just wear this. This is my permanent stack of fine jewelry. I shower and go to bed and I wear them 24 seven. So I haven't had the need to wear that one at all. And when one of my subscriber first name starts with an A and really wanted those, I just let her have it. Remember I said that I have a problem with the Dior piece. Same story one of the crystals fell off and i don't even know when exactly one of my friends had already even paid for them and wanted to buy them and when i was packaging them i guess one of the crystals just completely fell off of course i couldn't sell it to her anymore and i just consigned it as is up next i'm gonna discuss all the handbags that i sold but before we go there i wanted to thank today's video sponsor which is ideal by now you might have noticed my new earring and pendant i have on my ears the leah earring it is the cutest little pear shaped diamond and the matching pendant which is also a pear shape called the ava pendant these were so popular that they only had one left i paired it with their stud earrings in the big size you can wear the pendant this way Way as a teardrop or you can wear it upside down or even sideways it's a company located in Belgium they make really beautiful lab grown diamond jewelry with traceable 18 karat gold their modularity concept behind it also allows you to build your collection over time you can start off with a little stud and buy these add-ons over time you can mix and match them you don't even have to wear them as a pair like I said before I always have my bracelets and my necklaces on me 24 7 I shower and sleep with them and they're there's never been any problems. Their chains are so durable. Over time, when you build your collection, you can interchange the pendants, the earrings. You can wear several add-ons at the same time. They're just so playful and so fun. Most importantly, affordable because trust me, you will not be able to buy this size diamond at their affordable prices that they are. Lab-grown diamonds are real diamonds that are just produced in a laboratory. They have the same physical and chemical structure as real diamonds, but they're produced in a more ethical and sustainable environment, which means that they're more cost-friendly and also sometimes higher quality than even natural diamonds. I'm gonna make sure to link to every single item that I'm wearing as well as my coupon code. And a big, big thank you to Ideal and to you guys for supporting my sponsors because by supporting them, you are also supporting me. Thank Thank you so much. I love my little outfit today. This oversized shirt is from Vince. Removed my other necklaces because I just want to have a white gold moment. Trendy CC. It was definitely a more simple reason than you guys think. I was just getting ready to recuperate funds for my very, very expensive Almez journey in anticipation of my Kelly bag. In a perfect world where money is no object, of course I would have kept everything, but that's just not my reality. As painful as it was, I don't regret it one bit because now I have the Kelly. I would compare them to be, you know, the same similar vibe from two different houses. Obviously they're different, but to me they are sort of like same same but not really and so the trendy had to go the next chanel bag that i wanted to talk about is the gabrielle bag i had two of them i had this one and i also had the burgundy one they were both the same size and they were pretty much duplicates i know i will never get tired of black uh, not that i would get tired of burgundy the burgundy was brand spanking new and i would rather just the next person who buys it from me to almost have like a brand new bag experience because that's what I would have loved to get every time I get a bag. Because they were duplicate, I just had to let one go. So those two bags went to two very lovely subscribers who are very happy with their purchases. Uh, the next few went to basically family and friends. The reason why I'm showing this is because, yes, I did let go of my two coco handles at the time they were in the small size or the old mini size for some reason i just sort of have this love and hate relationship and the reason why i'm showing this is because one of the coco handle that i did let go is 
basically the same color as this. Not exactly, but similar, right? They're both light gray color. It never even appeared in my vlog sale because I, I just sold it privately. I would rather, if I could, sell everything to friends and family because I know they will take care of them and I... You know, it just, it just feels like, oh, they're just moving homes. They're not really gone. Another little bag slash SLG that went to one of my very dear, dear, dear subscriber is the same bag as this, but in the bright pink color. I literally only use the black one. And because I knew she wanted it so bad, she kept asking, insisting, wanting it. She was going to wait for it indefinitely. I just sold it to her. I don't personally enjoy selling so much myself, so whatever doesn't sell after a short period of time, I just rather consign them. The denim mood flap is one of them. I think I spoke about that bag so many times already. I literally bought it, never used it, and just felt so guilty not using it. It was never meant to be. Finally, the last Chanel bag that I sold last year was the round clutch. It served the same look, purpose, etc. But I prefer this one way, way, way more. Whereas the round shape one gets kind of disorganized, even though technically the round clutch has a bigger capacity than this one. But I still prefer this one. And I like that this one is compact and it's thin. It's close to the body. It also has a much shorter strap. I didn't wear the round one as much anyway, so I just consigned it. As far as Chanel bags, those were it, <laughs> which I think is a lot uh, in the grand scheme of things, but at the same time, it was really, really helpful and instrumental in being able to indulge myself in the Hermes journey. I just had to be responsible. I had to make it work by letting go of some of the things that I know would not serve me as much anyway. There were two other bags that were not Chanel that I also let go. Neverfull World Tour. So I still have a Neverfull. I have the classic monogram with the Vachetta leather. That one is my older and my first never fall. The one that I let go is the World Tour version and I just consigned it because it was just easier. Actually, the two other Chanel bags also were consigned to Luxe Du Jour. So it was really helpful to know that some of these items uh, were really popular uh, with their clients, their existing clients, and that they would sell pretty fast. The last bag that I sold was the Prada Crystal bag, the Re-Edition 2000. That one, I sold it to a subscriber. It was definitely a great evening bag and also like maybe like New Year's or Christmas bag. At the same time, I do own a lot of mini bags and I kind of can take any mini bags to parties and evening outs. And so I just let that one go as well. Last but not least, I have all the accessories that I decided to let go. The Chanel headband that I bought, I noticed that I don't really wear headbands either. So similar to how I noticed that I don't wear my brooches, I also don't wear that headband, even though I like the idea of it because it was Chanel. I love Chanel. Um, but because I hardly reached for it, even though it was such a novel, beautiful item and so I just let it go as well. So that one I also consigned to Fashion File. The Black Caviar Dad Sandals, I never wore them out. I always just sort of tried them out at home and I never felt that they were that comfortable even though I was just trying them at home. So I didn't want to risk having to break them in and then be painful with it. Another pair of Chanel shoes that I sold are the Chanel sneakers, the classic black and white mesh and leather sneakers. So those one were sports sneakers, sports shoes. I regret buying them only because I bought them in the wrong size. I hate that designer shoes are all over the place when it comes to sizing because I'm typically a 37 and a half European size in designer shoes and usually that works out for me but for some reason for those sneakers even though I sized up to a 38 it was still too short for my feet if I were to rebuy them I might have to go a whole size up so instead of a 38 I need to go to a 38 and a half the last pair of Chanel shoes that I did have to let go as well that did not work out for me and same story they were just a bit short for me and they were the beautiful gray suede boots. Two more pairs of shoes, the Hermes Easy Sandals. So those are the platform sandals. They're still very popular. They came back again at a higher price because they increased prices now. I would say that those ones are worth it if they do work out for you. I was too afraid to fall while wearing them. Not that that happened, it didn't happen at all, but just because they were kind of higher of a platform. Manolo Blahniks, after trying them so many times and even to the point of 
taking the plunge of buying a pair for myself and still not working out that I have given up on Manolo Blahnik. At least for the hang Yeezys, I have given up on them because they didn't work out for me. It didn't even serve any experience, any positive experience at all. In general, I don't regret my luxury purchases. Even when I do end up selling them, I usually am perfectly happy with having had the items for a while, but for some reason, shoes are not like that. Shoes, either I regret them or I love them, and I always regret them when they just don't work out for me. Like, they just either hurt me or are too small. Um, yes, some of them were mistakes, mainly shoes maybe aside from the denim mood flap everything else i feel like they serve their purpose while i own them i hope that this was helpful i am pretty sure that i covered everything thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and of course don't forget to check out ideal if you're brand new to my channel don't forget to subscribe i also host a weekly live stream on top of that and for the ultimate experience you can even join my membership where you get behind the scenes unboxings and story time. Thank you again and have a great day. I'll talk to you guys again very soon. Bye.